So for those of you that, that don't know, the theme this year is friendship, which uh, we get from uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, which states, Faithful friends are a sturdy shelter. Whoever finds one finds a treasure. Faithful friends are beyond price. No amount can balance their worth. Now, <laughs> I've been blessed with many good friendships throughout my life, and I hope you all have as well. But that doesn't mean our relationships, even the good ones, can't be improved. I can guarantee that your friendships will grow with the people you'll be spending your time with at Camp Apostles, but I hope you all take the time this week to learn and explore how to build and strengthen true friendships once you leave camp. So I read to you from verses 14 and 15, but a little bit earlier in the same chapter, God tells us, when you gain friends, gain them through testing, and do not be quick to trust them. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds awfully cynical for God, you know, given he created everyone, so we should all, all be inherently good. But who we spend time with is a big deal, because they influence our decision making. I was once told that a person's morality is the average of the five people with whom they spend the most time. The fact of the matter is that who we decide to call our friends can truly alter our entire personality. The results of both good and bad friendships surround us. Many of you probably heard this past January about a group of Gonzaga students who vandalized a house during a retreat. I know for a fact that most of those kids are not bad kids, because I know them. But a few bad friends began encouraging others to do more and more damage because they thought it was fun, with no regard for the consequences their friends would face. For a less serious example, uh, I began carpooling to practice with a guy on my crew team. Uh, let's call him Ben. Ben and I would take turns driving in every day. Uh, when I first began driving, I refused to cut people off. I thought it was terrible because like, you're assuming your time's more valuable than everyone else's. Ben did not have the same mindset. Whenever he drove, he'd always cut to the front of the line at our exit. After weeks of driving in and countless hours with Ben, I slowly began breaking my own rule. If I knew I had a lot of homework, I'd cut to the front of the line, but that was it. Then it was like, oh, traffic sucks today. Uh, it's fine, just this once. Oh, 90 Day Fiance's on, I gotta get home, they'll understand. Until I found myself cutting in every single day. As you can see, spending time with bad influences can slowly degrade our moral compass, which is why God stresses that we take the time to pick our friends. Okay, I think that's enough on bad friendship. When I began writing this, I looked up the traits of good friendship, because you know, I'm a robot who can't figure it out on my own. I noticed every list had the same five or so qualities. Compassionate, loyal, honest, good listeners, and willing to make sacrifices. I think the ultimate example of these qualities and true faithful friendship is God. We even see in the Gospel of John that Jesus begins calling us his friends, saying, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I've called you friends because I have told you everything I've heard from my father. Friends have, to be willing, friends have to be willing to make sacrifices. And Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice, dying on the cross to save us from our own sin. Hopefully, you'll never have to die for your friends. But to know if they really are your friends, just think about what kind of sacrifices you'd be willing to make for them, and if they'd be willing to make sacrifices for you. God is the ultimate good listener. He's omnipresent, which means he's literally everywhere at once, which allows him to hear all your prayers, see all your struggles, and understand all your relationships. He is your ultimate confidant because he already knows everything about you. You can't hide anything from him. God showed compassion by coming down to earth and becoming man. This allowed God to empathize with the human race, something we need to be able to do with our own friends when we know they're struggling. God's forgiveness is another show of compassion, as he's willing to forgive anyone for anything, as long as they are truly sorry and ask for forgiveness. Are you willing to do the same for your friends? Lastly, we know God is loyal. Through his devotion to his people and his refusal to give up on us. We're all sinners, and all have been marked by the original sin. But rather than give up on us and allow us to perish to hell, he sacrificed his only son to save us. God is the most perfect example of a friend. He is compassionate, he is loyal, he is a good listener, and he is willing to make sacrifices. A friend's influence does not have to be negative. Good friendships can have a profoundly positive impact on our lives, and I have certainly experienced it. I have been extremely blessed with my friends, many of which I have known since kindergarten or even earlier. 
We are able to bond through Cub Scouts, Ultra Serving, Swim Team, CYO Basketball, Summer Camp, Boy Scouts, Youth Group, High School, Crew, and so much more. These activities allowed me to become so close to these friends, and they continue to be the reason for my involvement in the community. If it wasn't for Peter and all the guys that go to youth group, I probably wouldn't be going to youth group every Wednesday night. If it wasn't for Eric, I probably wouldn't be doing Camp Apostles right now. If it wasn't for my friend Chris, I probably wouldn't have gone to work camp this year. Most importantly, if it wasn't for my first friends, my family, I probably wouldn't even be involved with the church, much less the Basilica. True friends encourage us to do things that make us better people and make us more comfortable and have more fun doing them. I can honestly say, youth group has been immensely fun because of the awesome guys that go with whom I've become friends. There's never been a dull moment, dull moment at a Camp Apostles prep meeting because of my friends. Work camp was a truly memorable experience because of my friends. Mass every week is an amazing experience with new lessons from the homily and God literally turning a piece of bread into his body. And I'm there because of my family, my friends. The purpose of all our relationships is to help us get to heaven. So my challenge to you this week is to examine your friendships and ask, do they help me grow grow closer to Christ? I hope you all have an awesome experience at Camp Apostles this week, and I hope you all develop strong, faithful friendships. Thank you.